Hello people watching this video, welcome to yet another review show, where it's basically the same as the others, just in a slightly different way. It's Halloween! Well, the month of Halloween at least, I mean it... You know, people do that same crap around Christmas. Okay, I'm turning this off then. I was going to talk about this game early on, but I thought, you know what, it's best safe for October. Okay, I don't remember exactly how I said it, but it was something along those lines. We're here to talk about the legend of the Jersey Devil. It was 1735, on a dark and stormy night. Mother Leeds was in labor. What about the game? That's what we're watching the video for. I just wanted to set the mood and do something funny afterwards, alright? If you're that impatient, why don't you just skip ahead? I'm sure I have it on the screen somewhere where you can skip it ahead to. And if you're just gonna watch this, just let me get through this. I'm not gonna be too long, alright? Alright, just, just be patient. No need to make a big Shut up! Mother Leeds' big mistake was when she found out she was pregnant with her 13th child. She cursed the child out of frustration. Now surely that won't have any long-term effects, right? When the child was born, he was normal at first, but then changed into a creature with hooves, a goat's head, bat wings, and a forked tail. But other than that it was alright, though it did kill the midwife. The lady who does the childbirth stuff. So that's not too good. Wow, that's a bit of a dark tale. The Legend of the Jersey Devil is a gruesome, scary tale that has multiple versions, but all should not be told to children. So naturally, they made a game for children. I mean, what, what the devil? Released in 1997 through 1999 in various places on PlayStation, Jersey Devil was based on the legend, obviously. Although looking at the game's version compared to the original version, you wouldn't really know it unless you only paid attention to the bat wings. In fact, looking at the video game's version, it kind of looks like they're trying to go for like a 90s Looney Tunes style Batman, at least in terms of design. I couldn't really find much info on the development of this game, but I do know that it did get mixed reviews from critics. This is another childhood game of mine, though I mostly grew up with a demo. Does the full game hold up today? Well, we'll just see what I have to say about it. Behit, behavior, be, behit, be, be, I gotta look this up. It's gotta be here somewhere. Maybe I'm not looking hard enough. Well, this is pretty neat. We have a cartoon opening before we start. Hey, whoa, might wanna back up there, horseless headsman. People are trying to watch. It was just the standard way of doing things in the 90s, wasn't it? Had to make cartoons, have them move all wacky and weird, and getting from point A to point B in the weirdest way possible to make it hard to follow. I thought it's a bad thing, it just... I don't get it. And now we're at a scary cel-shaded 3D building where the scariest thing about it is the disappearing details. Hmm. There must be some fly. I'm pretty sure it's very dead by now, you can quit chewing. Okay, I'm starting to nitpick and we haven't even gotten to the gameplay yet. What am I, a common popular YouTube gamer whining about modern Sonic? Anyway, it's here where we meet the evil Dr. Narf. Who currently seems to be hell-bent on dissecting an eggplant. Just as he's about to do so though, Pumpkin Spice Latte shows up and causes him to ruin the blade on his scalpel. That's unfortunate. Oh, Dennis. How many times have I told you? But, 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 look what I found. I hope for you it's not another rat. Well, he's not a Scottish ripoff of Dr. Cortex or anything. Look, it better not be. Oh, it's another rat, isn't it? Dennis, you cheeky one. So the story is, the evil Dr. Narf is trying to make an evil mutant vegetable army or something like that, when Dennis, the pumpkin guy, yes his name actually is Dennis, shows up and shows that he's captured another creature, which, spoiler, is Jersey Devil as a baby. The puppy. Gucci, Gucci. 
What a cute little devil. Yeah. It's too bad we're going to have to cut it into teeny weeny little pieces. In the name of science, of course. Yeah, good point. Ah! You sinful brain! That was my last blade! I hope you understand what this means. Well, all right, I don't know. All right. I don't know. I'm not comfortable with this. No, no, <laughs> okay, enough of the intro. I'm just going to speed through and explain kind of what happens as it shows that I'm speeding through right now. Okay, there we go. So basically, the lab explodes by, because Jersey Devil and stuff, and then it shows years later that the uh, the army is evading people and stuff, and then Jersey Devil ends up delivering his only line in the game that I know of. Alright, we're finally at the tile screens, which means I finally get to play the game. Okay, after this scene with uh, gameplay graphics. So, uh, I guess we'll wait, we'll wait till after this. Any moment now? Okay, now we move on. Finally. Yes, collecting the objects that really stand out. I wouldn't have known that if you hadn't have shown me. Can we please just move on to the game? Are we... are we all good? Are we, are we good here? Got, got anything else to show me? Or is that it? Okay. This is a nice little area to get used to the controls and, you know, prepare you for what's up ahead, but without being able to kill you. So, I think I'll land nice and safely right here on this box. Of course we have to watch out for the naturally growing TNT boxes in the area. Luckily though, the TNT boxes only harm you if you land on top of them, or if you throw it and it explodes too close to you. Alright, now let's open the gate, scratch our ass, and get ready for the first level, shall we? Yeah, I don't remember that statue in the demo version. As you can see, we have green boxes now. Given the fate of my landing on a TNT crate and hurting me, I don't know for sure what we're in for, so let's give it a shot. Ah! Oh, smashing. The red boxes pretty much do the same, although the green ones have something more special about them, but more on that later. The letters for NARF are obviously here, but now they're in more hidden or harder to reach places. Each time you collect one in an area, a door or pathway is unlocked. Also, by pressing a single button, you can turn the vibration on and off again. No more painstakingly going to the pause menu, probably because the pause menu sucks. The only options are to resume or exit the level. No volume changes or anything. It's a minor flaw, but still. So I like how whenever you make pumpkins appear, they can bounce around, but when they go off screen, they basically pause because whenever they come back on screen, they're still bouncing until they eventually stop while on screen. It's a little amusing. It kind of feels weird to control Jersey Devil, because it feels like he can only go in eight different directions. I realize that sounds obvious, especially for an old 3D platformer like this, but it doesn't always feel so smooth. I mean, sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. This is especially present whenever he's gliding. One very amusing thing is whenever you kill an enemy on here, they don't just simply disappear, they explode. It's quite amusing. Back to the controls, Mr. Devil for some reason likes to jump off of stuff every time he gets to the edge of them. It's good in a way because you don't simply just fall off, you actually get a second chance at life. But it can also be annoying because every single time you have to hear this. That's not the only sound effect that can get really annoying because it seems like the sounds in this game sound a little off or sound a little unbalanced and sometimes it's, it's more annoying than how many times I'm saying sound with my sound and my voice sound. Well aren't you a comedian? You know, it's weird. The pumpkins you collect are the ones that are just plain, but then you've also got these evil anthropomorphic pumpkins. You've got the non-talking bouncy ones, and the ones that sound like they're voiced by a younger giddy at Gibsonton. 
That joke only works for those who actually know what the Dingit Show is. You know that, right? I know, Git. Anyway, since we have all the narf parts now, it's time to go through this here door. You know, these big bugs used to terrify me as a kid, both because of their looks and that terrifying sound they made. This is an area where the auto jump can really come in handy because of the magic of 3D video game perspective. These bugs are very annoying because it's hard to tell when you're going to be able to attack them and when they're going to attack you. These Cartoon Network boxes are the checkpoints. These boxes can be slightly annoying because you have to jump on them every time. It's a minor annoyance, but it still would have been nice to be able to hit them in any way. What was that? Where's that camera going? To ah, whatever. I swear, when I first saw this, I really thought it was Mickey Mouse in a suit and hat. Little me had a weird perspective on things. Now normally, in the demo that I grew up with, this is where it would end after unlocking this door. But this is the full game, baby! I like how he can still collect these pumpkins by the tip of his horns. Or whatever they are. What? Didn't you know that? Didn't you know that underneath every building there's a hidden pyramid? Come on, it's Buildingology 101. You gotta know this stuff. What do you got, no brains? Clearly I don't, because it really just occurred to me that this is a museum, so it makes a little more sense. But then again, with a game like this, it wouldn't surprise me if this was just underneath some kind of house. Now, if you were thinking that these golden pumpkins would give you like 10 extra pumpkins or something, or heck, even like a special item if you collect all of them by the end of the game, then you'd be wrong, sister. Here's what they do. They give you extra health. Which, I mean, Jersey does need to stay healthy. I mean, the, the, these other pumpkins are not exactly nutritious. I think they forgot to kill this guy or make sure that he's dead before they put him in here. Come on, that's it? it was, oh. Okay, I was gonna say it was a little anticlimactic, but never mind. Okay, so maybe it was a little bit. <laughs> I mean, why not? Just push this dead guy's corpse around and then bounce on him to get to the next area. This game is for kids?! So I should probably mention what these green boxes do now. After collecting all of them in a level, you get this little green beaker. While I don't have a clip of it, I can tell you that it does unlock certain areas and stuff like that. It can kinda give you replayability, I guess. Now on to the first real boss of the game. Who's back? <laughs> you won't get away this time. <laughs> Gosh, how intimidating. Buddy, I think you need to lie down and rest that cold you have. This guy is really annoying. Not in terms of like difficulty or anything, but because of how long it takes to beat him and the sound of his voice. <laughs> oh, I see. Now you can look at more stuff. So apparently this is the final area of the game, but you can't really complete it without getting everything. Which again, I don't have a clip of. Also, I'm kind of starting to wonder if the veggie guys are actually the main villains of the game. Because I've been seeing a lot more non-veggie enemies, including these probably unintentionally terrifying werewolves. I don't know, this game is confusing. To be honest, I've shown you just about everything there is to offer in this game, at least in terms of gameplay. Well, except for freeing the hostages, so here you go. This game just isn't as good as I remember it to be. I know I only played the demo, but still. Games like this just usually seem better whenever you're a child. Anyway, I eventually got stuck at one point and kind of had to look up a guide. But then soon after, I eventually lost all my lives and I just stopped caring at that point. You know, I really tried to get into this game, and I was kind of hoping that nostalgia wouldn't be the thing that kept me playing it, but honestly, not even nostalgia could save it, because it's, it's a pretty mediocre game. I mean, don't get me wrong, it had some good ideas, like with the cartoony opening and stuff, and you know, I could see the potential in it, but it just it's just not very fun when you really play it, and it's, it's kind of a shame. So yeah, it's, it's mediocre. But hey, fitting for Halloween, right? So thank you all for watching this video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, or any of my... Wait a minute. 
to the new channel. I gotta change what I normally say. I think you think it's something good. So thank you all for watching this video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, then go ahead and click or touch that subscribe button, hit the like button if you like this video, and ending what I normally say now. That is indeed what I'm normally gonna say for now. So, what I'm gonna do now is... What's that noise? Fake blood, people. <laughs>